This story begins before the stars are in the sky, before the first wind ever blew, before the first tree ever grew. This story begins in the beginning. Back then, the whole of the world was a great round ball covered in dry red sand, and all other things in creation, from the highest stars to the dance of the wind and the growing of the grass and the splash of the waves, everything that would ever be in creation in the earth or the heavens, was dreaming underneath that dry red sand below the surface of the earth, dreaming of what they would be when finally they awoke. And the first of all dreamers to awaken was the rainbow serpent. The story you're about to see is a journey I've taken five years to complete. A journey that's taken me to all the earth chakra points around the planet traveling around two serpent ley lines that circumnavigate the planet. I've spoken to many tribal elders that you will meet and worked with communities to work towards global peace, a unity, spiritual unity, a worldwide community. I presented in a way of poetry to get my heart song out there to the world. For you to find that seed that you resonate with amongst the words and images. So enjoy this journey and hopefully you enjoy it as much as I did. Peace and love. Om Shanti Shalom. It was at Uluru where I received my mission a rainbow spark of light responded to the crystal gift I had given. So small it flared, but full of intention, set me on a journey of spirit invention. To each earth chakra point you will travel, was the demand. In order from root to crown, performing rites to the land. On the back of rainbow serpent, and hand in hand with brothers and sisters. Encircle the seven sacred sites for world unity, and these to me are Mount Shasta, base, Lake Titicaca, sacral, Uluru, solar plexus, Glastonbury, heart, Egypt, throat, Glastonbury, third eye, and Mount Kailash, crown. So I went on this mission, to work towards global peace, to work on oneness within myself and hopefully those I meet, to travel consciously to the sacred sites, give them the time and respect they deserve, as this felt right, to talk to spirit and mother earth in the universal language of love, to bring ceremony to communities to confirm that we are one, Bring the heart song to these sites and receive insights as I connect to the elders, seen and unseen, on this little planet of blue and green. So I guess it's a road trip by me, Tor, this glastronaut, through time, space, and spiritual thought. To give up a 45k job in TV and let go of securities to trust and be free. What is a chakra? I hear some of you cry. Seven spinner wheels of energy in the body, seen only by the mind's eye. Many religions and faiths have held their secrets since the beginning of time, and shared practices to release their knowledge and bring us closer to the divine. The Kundalini, as called by Indian yogas, is the serpent power that spirals these chakras, connecting mind, body, soul and spirit, healing and balancing. Chakras are said to be as gateways, 
connecting the body of man as microcosm to the planet of Earth as macrocosm. So it was November 2005 in Glastonbury. I'd been there since the millennium influx. I had my plan laid out for me. No money to set me free. First sacred site to visit was Mount Shasta. Visa was to pay for me. Via San Francisco I would go, but I don't know. Credit card bill loomed as I walked up Bushy Coombe under the cancer full moon. My guide simply said, trust, have no expectations, and be excited. Easy for them, I thought, as I looked at my dire finances. Wow, the electric company has taken a load of money out of my account. I gave them a call, and without a court case or pause, they said, sure, sir. By our laws, we owe you 859 pounds and 33 pence. It will be with you post hence. Okay, trust was strong, and with the number eight as unity, 59 the number on my home's door, and 33, as you've heard before, my numerology, and much, much more, I was off. Focusing on co-creating global oneness. Ah, how to do this? Still walking now up Glastonbury Tor, I thought seeds of peace in crystal form. Pick one up from each chakra site, take to the next and bury there with a right. Nice one. And twas more, I placed my hand in pocket and produced a small obsidian piece. It had been there, in that place, since Oz. And now it is the first in the stitching of the rainbow serpent motion on its way to Mount Shasta, California, across the ocean. San Francisco, what better place to start this mission? 1967, summer of love, dawn of the age of Aquarius, and also the doorway to the planetary chakras. I'm guided by two goddesses to the first site on this sacred serpent map. Our sleeping is arranged at Shasta's Dream Lodge, Dream Hut. Hosts Dreaming Bear, Singing Bear, Spirit Wolf and Fern greet us. We instantly enter a serene scene, a living dream. No better place could I have visioned, nor in my mind's eye seen. I got down to work, wanting to connect to the land and hear her sing. I was told to meet Charlie Tom, Karuk Nation Elder, known as Red Hawk. He had been saving the mountain from a multi-million dollar ski resort. He had won the battle and told us how our mission he wanted to support. This is a piece of obsidian, mm -hmm. which I found in Australia. Oh yeah. When I was uh, doing some spiritual work in Australia, mm -hmm. near Ayers Rock. And um, last full moon, I was uh, inspired to, to bring this here to Mount Shasta, oh, to yeah. bury it at Mount Good. Shasta. Got obsidian. To link. England and Australia mm -hmm. and Mount Shasta, those three places. Through the crystals. Yeah, that, that's good. It's wonderful experience when you can do when you can do God's work like that. Yeah. Wonderful experience. You can't go never go wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all about unity. Yeah. Brother sisterhood. Yep. Yeah. A ho, Charlie Tom. Your body is waning, but your spirit is strong. Your love and faith inspires through silence. Your giving of life retains the balance. Make a smoke signal, use strong wood. Take this piece from Dr. Rock, a rock split by lightning. Where the tree stood, 8,000 feet above this land, I'll break it in half, here. Set them alight, hold them in your hands. Pray strong. 
Place fir, brow, and pine on the fire. Make good smoke. Take this medicine. Two Indian tobaccos, the real thing. Herb and roots. Strong medicine. Medicine from way down low and way up high. Let the smoke go to spirit and pray strong and sing your songs. I wish I can come with you and do it. I trust you, you can do it. Do it for all. Bury that rock in the mountain. Honor spirit, but be prepared before you do it. Thank you, Charlie Tom. Thank you for your silent wisdom and your visions as we drove through dream time. You're in every rock and tree, mountain and sea. I'll see you there in spirit. We shall dance and drum with all unseen gathered. Brother, a whole. Father, brother, grandfather, we are all one. Well, Mom Shot is uh, a special place for all Native Americans around here. I mean, you know, local, clear around it. And we saved it for that reason, because they were gonna put multi-million dollar ski resort in an area, and, and the spirit sent me in there to stop it, and I did. But I'm pretty, pretty educated in spirituality from grassroot, grassroot level. I can trace my ancestors back clear to 1600 or 15. And uh, I'm pretty knowledgeable in a lot of things, a lot of things that I do. Of course, I have faith too, you know, faith in what I do. Have to have faith. And it works. Yeah. It's nice to see young people such as you guys come together and travel, you know, whatever you're working for, a spirit. to the womb, the mother, connecting the dream lodge to every soul, to every heart, to every imagination and creation, for we are all here. Mother, Father, divine union, communion, we are common bless, union. Bless, 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 it be. bless it be. Cleanse us with your smoke, cleanse the earth with the smoke, cleanse us all, cleanse all humanity, cleanse spirits, dance with us, drum with us, be with us. Take this to all humanity. Take this to all indigenous tribes. Take your truth. Let it be known. Let it awake people. Let it be the truth. Let this union, let brothers and sisters come together again. Let us all awake, united. Send your prayers, send your wishes, send Let your Let us all beers. grab a hand of soil. Take Take it down. Of fire here. With each hand of soil, we grab the sacred vow. Sacred vow. <laughs> yeah, we'll always stand for each other. Yeah. Okay. Curving Just move in around. the galaxies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Twelve zodiac signs. Twelve moons in a solar year, twelve disciples and twelve tribes of Israel. The following day was the twelfth of the twelfth of 2005. We found ourselves at the sacramental headwaters. All was fine. Another ceremony was before us, giving to the world energy which yesterday the rainbow serpent had brought us. Through the waters the rainbow serpent shall live and give and be free for us. Robert Kuhn, the visionary of our time, in 1967 received a message so divine. Biblical Elijah spoke to him of the rainbow serpent map, the map that we do follow. 
was created very near this land in Boulder, Colorado. What is this 1967, the summer of love, dawning of the age of Aquarius? Well, first, the age of Aquarius is now upon us. It is a phenomenon known as the procession of the equinox. Sun rises in a new starry zodiac constellation every 2,225 years, approx. 2,000 years ago, we left the age of Aries to follow Christ's message of love. And we witness this throughout the age of Pisces. And now we follow these children of indigo light into the age of Aquarius. The children of light are being born with this new consciousness. And maybe by 2012, the Mayan date of reckoning, we would have understood this new Christ consciousness, that which is bestowed upon us. So all this stuff of a rainbow serpent? Well, 175,000 years ago, the Australian Aboriginals in Dreamtime story told of a rainbow serpent birthing all awake. And now again, she has all will return to give us a reminding shake. Therein, we also have the Mayans Quetzalcoatl serpent of rainbow plume. They have said he too will return and very soon, 2012 is the date to bring us to our rainbow fate. Robert Kuhn, the visionary of the planetary chakra map, shows us these two serpents circling the earth. And remember, not so long ago, it was meant to be flat. It is a fact like the Greek Ouroboros earth serpent, inspired by the Milky Way. They eat their tails, symbolizing the cycle of life and death. As planets orbit the sun, and all returns to where it once begun. These energy lines, serpent lays, connect the chakra sites through symmetry. Many tribes have foretold of rainbow insights, like the Hopi prophecy, warriors of the rainbow story, paving the way for the children of light, bringing karmaless love to this earth and for us to delight in the newness beyond 2012. Also known from birth as the indigo children, the millennium and crystal, all the same being born around the earth for us to find global peace and be still. I too found out I have namesake in this lineage as Thor, God of Thunder, also the namesake of Glastonbury's Hill traveled down Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge, from Midgard, the realm of the mortals, to Asgard, the realm of the gods, and fought with the world serpent Ormenganda and fought against the odds. Both died in Ragnarok. Ormenganda, also a circle cycle serpent with his tail in his mouth, symbolizing death and rebirth, but not in the church, Christ's so-called house, where they have demonized Thor and the dragon with Michael and George slaying them, portraying them as evil. But my feeling is they are equal. The sword and the lance are symbols of truth, bringing down and aligns the Christ consciousness to the earth from the galactic center, center of the Milky Way, where be a black hole our solar system's birth of which we align with again, sun and earth at winter solstice 2012. So time to rehearse, so we move on in this new cycle. Let's not go in reverse. Next, I was off to Peru, where Incas believed the snake as sacred knowledge. This is one of the two places where the Quetzalcoatl and the Rainbow Serpent meet as they circle this great pond's ridge. Lake Titicaca, the sacral chakra, 
the highest lake on the earth's surface. Here they meet after they have travelled so far, and lovemaking is their service. The rainbow serpent started her journey from Uluru Oz across the ocean to meet her love, Quetzalcoatl, whom came from Palenque, Mexico, they embrace, transmuting our fear to let it go for the human race and moving us up a gear into Christ consciousness. I was told to meet an elder from England, Sonia Newhouse. It was as is. She has been working with indigenous tribes in Cusco for years. Island of the Sun was our destination. On Lake Titicaca, where she knew a temple ruin, a journey was upon us. It's not too far. Well, it was about a day's travel when we got there. Greeted by the rainbow serpent herself. Wow. She was like the earth's sacred altar. No one could fault her. Starting from this point here in, in Cabana, where we saw the rainbow and, and then we went out on the boat and when we got there we, we decided we should stay there two nights and uh, it was actually, we worked out, which amazingly, synchronically, yes. that it was the full moon in, in Cancer, which is the, which is the, the, the time Robert Kuhn has suggested the Amazing, energies of, it? yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for the lightning and the full moon. I give you these three crystals to hold balance and unity. The coming together of the rainbow serpent and the plume serpent. A ground crystal spiral, center of this triangle of crystals from Mount Shasta, this unifying of the true love of life, of giving birth, and unity that the rainbow serpent and the plume serpent represent in this lake and in the lake of our bodies. The sacral chakra. Thanks, Great Spirit, greatly for, for the healing energy. It's been a fabulous experience. We have missed it for the world. It was truly perfect, arranged beyond my control. The work had been done. Bless my soul. We were at the island of the sun under the full moon in Cancer. As part of Robert Kuhn's vision, he sees each Earth chakra align to a zodiac sign. The base, Mount Shasta, is Taurus. The sacral, Lake Titicaca, is Cancer. The solar plexus, Uluru, is Capricorn. The heart, Glastonbury, is Leo. The throat, Egypt, is Libra. The third eye, Glastonbury again, is Leo. The crown, Mount Kailash, in Tibet, is Scorpio. These are the times that Robert Coombs suggests you go to the sacred sites to do your sacred rites. Think high, think low, think love and the children of Indigo. Is it a coincidence that after ceremony, in the balance and unity of male and female integrity, that the first ever female president Michel Blanchet was elected in Chile, probably. But all along the rainbow serpent lay are myths and legends involving the play of male and female, like the lays along the summer solstice sunrise line in England, dedicated to Saint Michael, Dragon Enlightener, and Mary Magdalene, who bears the Christ consciousness so deep within her divine feminine. Through Australia you have serpents, Kunia and Liru, named lays along the song lines. Who knew 
that across the world the male Kania from the south and female Liru from the north were linking with male and female stories along the Rainbow Serpent Line and of course they meet at Uluru, the Earth Solar Plexus Chakra and this was where I was to continue. I had my appointment to commune with the Rainbow Serpent herself in spirit form. I first landed in Melbourne where I was whisked away to a worldwide bush duff a music festival which shares its name with the rainbow serpent that carries me. I was also there two years earlier, before I met her. It was as if this was the doorway to free her. I was introduced to the most beautiful Aboriginal elder, Auntie Mona Wilson. She gave me a prayer to talk to the spirit mob at Uluru Birthing Pool. I was to meet the elder, Bob Randall, of the Yan Kun Yat Yara people. Three separate folk told me to meet him. A perfect connection as he was bridging Aborigine with the Christianity. I nearly missed him when I landed. They said I needed paperwork and long gone handed it in to meet any Aboriginal elder. But I got his number and it was as if he yelled, Oi fella, over here, because he met with me, just like that. And we had the most almighty, beautiful chat. Rainbow Servant here is in a, okay, quite uh, in a sack, but there is a, a base of it at Mordicula Springs. When the wind is dry and it's drought, that you can call out to, uh, to, to the servant and attack, and it'll release water for us to draw from. See, that's how it was important to us. Because, you know, water is it, the base of life. So the rainbow serpent to us is re really uh, uh, so real because it is about water, the fluid of life, you know, and you can find it through the colours of the uh, uh, of the crystals, you know, and some of our ceremonies are that white quartz that's used for healing. The same thing it is connected to that rainbow serpent energy. Some of the ceremonies are very sacred still even today. Serpent is very important because, as I said to you, you know, it's water, it's life, yeah. it is life, it is water, mm. it's life, mm. uh, it's a connecting uh, uh, all of us together through being alive. Mm. Looks like rain, eh? Dear Bob Randall, the water, yes, the water, so simple and so spot on. The substance that we all have in common. 70% swimming around our body and head with rainbows and consciousness, holding memories and brilliance. Francis Firebrace, another Aborigine elder, told me once, to have rainbows in your aura, you first need in your eyes water. So cry, my dear friends, for the world and all its slaughter. Every time we drink from our Mother Earth, we become closer to our sisters and brothers, sons and daughters. This was why I'd been inspired to gather waters from each of the planetary chakra points. This is the Rainbow Serpent Insomniac calling us to gather for her to anoint. It was a time of great connection at the Uluru Rock with the reception from spirit giving me a divine and light-hearted knock. 
I arrive at the spring in the woods where Robert Coombs says the rainbow serpent was birthed. Took a long walk around the rock, which soon the stars would submerse. I was looking for a crystal. Locals say take nothing from the rock, it will only bring you bad luck. I found a stone and asked should I pick it up? Yes, no, yes, no. Well, I picked it up saying, give me a sign to let it go to drop. I heard a dingo howl and remembered in Robert Coons and Bob Randall's books, whom could be prophets, tell of a demon dingo. So I said, hear it again, and I'll just let go. I did, so I did. So what was I to take back to Avalon, the heart chakra? The waters, of course. I walked two hours around the rock in the desert night, as if I was being prepared as a brave for tomorrow's rite. The next day came, and another Aborigine rule is not to film your sacred rites. I thought, well, I'm making a documentary, and it's just me, it should be right. I was not thinking of the spirits whom stand there out of sight. I put up the camera, and walked to the water's edge. The battery ran out. I scratched my head. I charged it last night. So I walked back to the car to get another, and the wind picked up. Hello, Rainbow Serpent, I muttered. Put the new battery in, and kid you not, as I walked away, a gust of wind, and the camera was knocked. A third time, I thought. Then I'll listen to the Aborigine law. I picked up the camera and turned it on. Walked to the water's edge and going for a song, it turns itself off. I was miffed. This is wrong. I did not film. But I did the ceremony, witnessed by spirit, the rainbow serpent and a hawk. I packed up and off I walked. I felt as if eyes were burning into the back of my head. I turned, slightly shocked but mainly in awe, standing there, out of the watering hole so small was a thirty-foot light-bodied serpent staring at me with great intensity. It was like a cobra, ready to pounce, but was only there to let me know to announce she knew who I was. I gave my respect and left at once. I made my way back to Glastonbury for the Heart Chakra Ceremony. This is the land where the uncle of Christ, Joseph of Arimathea, 2,000 years ago did appear. He was given 12 hides of land, there's that number again, by King Aravagus, a druid king, who helped his friends flee the Jerusalem killing. Mary the mother and Mary Magdalene accompanied him. They brought and grounded Christ's teaching. Certainly working with the locals and being inspired by their offerings to the land and the stars, they synchronized their festivals, equinox, solstice, and all the year's quarters. The pagan winter solstice, celebration of the return of the light, was noted for years before it was confused to be the date of the birth of Christ. Tis now known he was born in September. The ceremony was more to remember, to prepare for the return of the Christ Consciousness, which is now 2,000 years on upon us. At the time of Christ's death, they knew this seed needed to be sown. So when the Consciousness rose to the level of Aquarius, the Christ Light would return and guide us on another two millennium to the age of Capricorn. For my next heart song, I wanted to honour Christ's chalice message, the overflowing cup of unconditional love. So controversially, the date chosen was 6th of the 6th, 2006. But do we know what that number is? The beast? No, of man. Listen to the book of Revelation. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man and this number is 603 score and 6. We are just given the choice to be the beast or to follow our hearts. Let man turn his true nature into evil or make a new start to be of good, of God, of the six-pointed star, the Aquarian symbol, 
It came from the Piscean five-pointed star, followed by the kings. Who follows the star now, as the sun rises in 2012 and the new age begins? I knew the choice was right, as the night before our earth chakra right, Aborigines gathered at our Albion's most sacred site. Stonehenge, for the first time ever, was to stage our brother's dance. We jumped into the car and seized our chance. The night before we gathered, 13 of us on Glastonbury tour, another number demonized, so fitting, the feminine, 13 moons synchronized. We met there at sunrise. The uh, heart chakra aspect, as far as I can see it, is tied up entirely with the Joseph of Arimathea journey and uh, that that energy that was denied 2,000 years ago and evidently crucified and the land cleared. One must remember the Romans came in shortly afterwards and cleared all the Jews and everybody out of that region. So you can't say that in terms of a, of a culture that was, that was grounded there and ongoing, it scattered immediately. The Essenes scattered, everybody scattered. But what we do know after whatever happened there at a, at a mystical level, that a Grail family did move over to Glastonbury. And Joseph of Arimathea certainly came there, Mary Magdalene, some of the Marys came farther south of France, and various of the Apostles came, and that there was generally a movement of whatever was anchored to be placed esoterically at Glastonbury to await the 2000 year incubation period. That's really what I feel it was all about. Joseph of Arimathea, who Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, Christ family, that brought the chalice here. And the heart is about the divine child. And return to the divine child within you. Yeah. Connect to Mother Earth. Father Sky, mm. these are your parents. Mm. Honor those that gave birth to you. What I'd like to do is to connect our hearts to this bottle of water from the Uru Spring where the Rainbow Serpent lives. The Rainbow Serpent is the water, so in that bottle we have the Rainbow Serpent, who has come to Glastonbury Avalon, the heart chapel. So to connect that heart space, maybe go into your, your heart and find some words, just sing, single words to express your heart. It can be any words you choose. Love. Joy. Abundance. Wisdom. Family. Home it out to the world to let them know that the heart chakra is united. Love, 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 love! <laughs> beauty, beauty! Good old family! Hard time! Beautiful world out there! Woo! 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 
So now I am to understand the link with the Ouroboros and the Milky Way being one. Another death and rebirth cycle as I enter Halloween, Samain. The dark time, where the veil is thin. Maybe here the mouth of the Quetzalcoatl and Rainbow Serpent begins and meets the tail linking the space between, moving inwards to the unseen. My next stop is the throat chakra, the land of death and rebirth itself, Egypt. I'd been stumped for how it was going to happen, and then I bumped into my friend Oriel from Australia. I said, hang on, as he told me synchronically he was off to Egypt to do Halloween Sawain ceremony with his k group. So I won't be on my own, and this is good. Oriel has been traveling the Rainbow Serpent too for a lot longer than I. But synchronically we meet at the throat and left again before the third eye. Giza can be a hard place to circumnavigate your fate of rebirth, but I did. Even though I was cautious of chaos in Oriel's group, I knew where I stood and needed this path to align to my faith. And sure enough, I met my fate. As I lay in the granite sarcophagus of the king's chamber, my light body left me and returned in the favor of my new teacher, Rama, whom I'd been working with in meditation for a long while. He brought me here to cleanse my soul in the Nile. I had to let go of all I had learnt with a smile and let go of my earthly possessions for a while. As a few days passed, I learnt that around that time my house had burnt to the ground, leaving me with naught but that which I had with me at the time. If that's not transformation, then death and rebirth is a crime. It seems that the Egyptian throat chakra, which is held also in the Holy Land, Jerusalem, is a pivot point for the serpent lions. The third eye consciousness was held here 2,000 years ago, more or less, with the birth of Christ shown drinking from his mother's breast, giving us life of the age of Pisces to lay to rest the heathen age of Aries. It does not lie on the chakra lines, but nonetheless stands as a point aligned to the stars, like Orion's belt, an arrow to the star of hope in the sky Sirius. The six-pointed rainbow star bringing healing to our new age so far and will continue as a symbol for the next 2,000 years till we once again understand Orion's message and a new age begins. Ground the crystal spiral, connecting this crystal with the center of the earth, spiraling back up. Egyptian um, Giza is the throat chakra point on the world 
um, rainbow serpent energy points. And so the throat chakra is very much to do with manifestation, with creation, with making things manifest, with being able to voice your truth. And um, it's like the word of God, everything was spoken first. The most important thing, the most important energy that we used is, is our voice, is the word, is, is what, what we say. And so um, visiting Egypt has really helped me sort of get into my own power and bring about my own personal um, knowledge of Egyptian mysteries. But also in my research, what I've been finding out is that they, they worked intensely with the chakras, um, with the serpent kundalini energy. It's, you can see it on all the crowns, the Uranus that came out of the king's heads. Um, and they were deeply aware of, of the snake. You've got the caduceus, which is the symbol of the two snakes going up the staff with the wings coming out and the globe on the top. That was one of the ancient Egyptians, um, Unus starts. Um, and a lot of the so-called magic and religious workings that the ancient Egyptians worked with was, was based on the serpent energy. So now we come to the third eye, which sums up much of which I have described. There is no fixed location for this chakra, but it moves with every eon shift to a new site. 2000 years ago, Joseph of Arimathea brought these energies to Glastonbury, the Avalon Shores, from the Holy Land, which the Christ family adores. And now it's fully matured and bears the fruits for William Blake's New Jerusalem thoughts and here it will stay for the next 2,000 years till seeded for Capricorn in Recife, Brazil. Some locals see Joseph of Arimathea as a myth, but this story is now rising back to the surface, bringing us the essence of the Christ consciousness. The monks in a cult held this secret sacred for us. The monks came to their death for this, Blessed Richard Whiting, the last abbot of Glastonbury, was subjected to a black magic ritual by the men of Henry VIII. But he did not die in vain, as the truth is now no game, but will bring us to the new consciousness. Much has happened in the heart of the New Jerusalem Avalon, such as in 1935, Catherine Maltwood rediscovered the long lost landscape temple also known as King Arthur's Round Table. The 12 zodiac signs are clearly designed in the fields, hills, rivers and sacred sites, with a 13-mile circumference built in 2700 BC or thereabouts. Maybe this is the 12 hides of land Joseph was given as he moored on Wirial Hill from that stormy sea it's said to be on the year of 47 AD. Even here we find abstract evidence of the shifting of an eon, as the sign of Pisces in the Glastonbury Zodiac lands directly on Wirial Hill, where the Christ family are said to have arrived for the age of Pisces. This is God's will. Then they move to the foot of Glastonbury Tor, which holds the age of Aquarius, and what's more, they planted the holy thorn that flowers at the winter solstice dawn. Another sign of importance of this time? For 2,000 years, they have prepared us to welcome the age of Aquarius at 2012 winter solstice. In the last few years, a unicorn has also been found in the landscape whose third eye is located on a sacred mound for Christ's love's sake, dedicated as Glastonbury Tor to St. Michael, dragon and all. Borough Mump is the name of the site. This is, of course, where we did our third eye right. 
and the date had to be just right. 12th of the 12th, 2006. The focus I felt was releasing fear, and I was to hear that many gathered globally on this date for that same prayer. So it was fate, I'm glad to declare. Here also the Rainbow Serpent Lay travels, known locally as the Michael Line. Here it unravels itself from its labyrinth knot that it danced on the tour, and leaves Avalon to Cornwall and travels on furthermore. This is the third eye of the unicorn in the, the landscape which is connected to the uh, Glastonbury Zodiac. Call forth Yeshua, Joseph Arimathea, Magdalene, connected to this land. An awareness and appreciation and love for the pagans and the druids and all indigenous tribes around the planet. And St. Michael, this hill is dedicated to. The third eye, in my understanding, is the aspect of ourselves that represents our perception and consciousness. And at the moment, that particular consciousness rest in the heart chakra and the heart chakra is here in Glastonbury and uh, that is really also why I have come to Glastonbury because my work is very much to do with helping to raise that conscience and the consciousness of the Christos. I feel very much that the uh, whole understanding of the Christos was grounded here 2,000 years ago when Joseph of Arimathea first came to these parts. And uh, it sort of is in the ground, you can feel it vibrating as you sit peacefully in meditation and just focus on where you're sitting. You can sense those beautiful energies still within the ground in this area. However, it is now the time where, where this consciousness is having to awaken afresh and anew. And mankind has become sufficiently evolved to begin to understand those energies as they prevail within the universal order now. And the crystals I see as the universal principle of unconditional love, which was exactly what Jeshua grounded upon the earth when he first came into his ministry 2,000 years ago. The unicorn, the uni horn, is about unity. The binding of oneness, the coming together of the focus. The third eye is totally connected to that horn that comes from that space of the third eye. Projecting the third eye vision and connectedness to spirit. Connecting that gap between reality and dream time, between body and spirit. And that is what we all strive for. So my journey and pilgrimage of discovery was nearly done. Five years on and it was the crown that was left. And the dove of peace was to come to nest. Much had I learnt of the global oneness. We will all be affected by the new consciousness. The freedom within is the search of the true pilgrim whom travels into their hearts and finds that love. Make a new start at their root and by the crown all will be found. As above, so below. As Ouroboros, Milky Way and Glastonbury Zodiac has shown, our chakras are the same as Mother Earth's sacred sites. All the rites performed bring one form of thought. We love our Earth and we love ourselves as one. We can truly become liberated and shine like the sun. All body, spirit and soul will be released of any Piscean spell and we will be free to embody the new age 
Whatever it is, it is new and has no religion, no boundaries, only a clean slate for us to define our Aquarian rainbow faith. As a twist in the serpent's tail, I was to end my pilgrimage without to fail the understanding of this new love. Instead of traveling to the final destination, the crown chakra, I was to sit tight in Glastonbury town and await further instructions, and they came. The Tibetan Buddhist elder, Lama Kempo Rinpoche, arrived like a purifying flame. Timed after the China's Olympic shame, he came from Kathmandu, near where the crown chakra Mount Kailash looms. Here he has built a school for the children of light, given them homes. I was to give him the final crystal, for him to take to Mount Kailash when he felt informed. And the gathering was synchronically held where the message of the dove was formed, on the Glastonbury Zodiac again, with my dearest friends. A simple ceremony, which ended with the rainbow serpent suspended from the heavens, calling us to join her when the time is right and without fear or fight into the light and reminding us of the oneness in the crown of heaven and earth. Naturally, Tibet is top of all, head of all, the highest place in this world. And of course, the Mount Clash we can say the crown chakra, the top chakra, body of this wall. And through that links, giving energy all over walls, because our head chakra giving uh, energy for whole, whole our body. So likewise, uh, Mount Clash, the Buddhist point of view, or Hindu's point of view, is very, very important heritage site very very important holy place which is we can do pilgrimage in our lives so that is the top chakra that is the chakra of the head from the uh, third eye glastonbury okay in your own time to bring okay. this to the the crown okay in ho honor of uh, global unity and i promise oneness thank you very much i often kalash thank you this is going to be excellent offering to mount kalash and local god, and Buddha, Buddha, and Bodhisattva, and different Buddha. So this is going to be one of the excellent offerings from Glastonbury. I'm very happy. And crystal, I really like crystal. We have to make our mind like this crystal. We have to get our perception like this crystal. Mm. We have to make pure our mind like this crystal. How pure, how nice, how excellent. We can say it through directly from other side to other side. <laughs> so this is example of our mind. Our mind, we cannot catch, but we have feel. Mind goes to directly. Nobody can stop to mind to stop one place. So, likewise, uh, the crystal is not disturbing from crystal to see others. So this is very good examples to understand our mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful and very nice. So also I visualize to Mount Kailash offerings, also from my side. Thank you so much to offerings Mount Kailash and Buddha and uh, and Buddha Dharma and Sangha. Great offerings, good examples. And I wish to understand all human beings, all sentient beings, our mind like this crystal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rainbow's in there as well. And rainbow is there, and rainbow is there. <laughs> so we hope after we offering this in Mount Kalash, crown chakra, then the whole, be, whole world going to be peace and going to be global unity. Harmony, loves, compassions, everybody. Thank you. And long life for Dalai Lama. Long life.
For Norse mythology and some Native American groups, the Rainbow Bridge is open. In ancient Sanskrit and Hinduism, the Antakarana has been completed. In the language of the world's oldest spiritual practice, shamanism, the Axis Mundi has been completed. In the Hebrew Bible as well as Christian, Mormon, Kabbalistic and some Islamic traditions, the Tower of Babel has been completed. In Islam, the House of Peace has been built. In terms of numerology, the rebirth begun. In terms of the common Buddhist, the Buddhist stupa has been built. In terms of the Tibetan Buddhist, the path to Shangri-La has been found. In terms of the Essenes, oneness with God has returned. In terms of the New Way, early Christians and the Arimatheans, the Christ consciousness has returned. In Avalon, New Jerusalem has been built. In terms of the Mayan prophecy, the Quetzalcoatl has returned. In terms of the Australian Aborigine Dreamtime, the Rainbow Serpent has returned. Somewhere. Over the rainbow, way up high, in the land, that I heard of once, once, in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true, really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star, and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow the skies are blue and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true someday i'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you'll find me if happy little bluebirds fly above the rainbow why oh why can't i oh why can't i oh why can't I, if happy little bluebirds fly, where troubles melt, like lemon rocks, away above, the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me, somewhere, over the rainbow, way up high, somewhere, over the rainbow, way up high, in the land, that I heard of once, in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream, really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star, and wake up, where the clouds are far behind me. That's where you'll find me. <laughs>